Imagine, if you will, just four weeks ago, an innocent Andy who had signed up to his first ever Warhammer tournament. And with just four months under his belt, innocent Andy knew no better. And this seemed like a really great way to expand his skill set and learn from some of the best in the industry. It seemed like there was so much time ahead to build and paint his new army. However, Andy's been procrastinating. That brings us to today, present day Andy. The tournament is just over a week away. There's still so much to do. I am in no way ready. So this video is not a how-to guide for beginners on how to prepare for your first Warhammer tournament. This is a guide on what not to do to prepare for your first Warhammer tournament. You see, games of Warhammer play out in a few different ways. It's primarily done on a points-based system. In a game, you've got either 500 points, 1,000 points, or 2,000 points. A 500-point game is the starter size game for all Warhammer players. So somebody new to the hobby will start with a 500 point game. You can usually do a 500 point game within one hour from start to finish. A 1000 point game is what a lot of experienced players play as a quick game. So it typically takes around two to maybe three hours to play a thousand points. I would say most beginners aspire to play a thousand point game. I've only played one so far in my just over four months of playing uh, and it took me about four hours. So. <laughs> still pretty intense, it's a decent sized game. And then you have 2,000 points. So 2,000 points are the size games that most experienced Warhammer players use. On average it takes four hours to play those games, but it, it just depends on how quickly and how experienced those players are. When I signed up just four weeks ago to this tournament, I only had around 500 points of models, even purchased. I hadn't built them, I hadn't painted them, because I was under the assumption the tournament would probably be a thousand points but to my shock it was a two thousand point tournament so I've spent the last four weeks madly buying boxes of models building them in a haphazard sort of way just getting as much done as I can I'm essentially cramming what would usually take six months into the space of just six weeks. With just over a week to go, I'm really feeling the pressure now. Usually what you do for these sorts of tournaments is step one, you plan which models you're going to take. Step two is you build the models. And then step three is to actually paint the army. However, in my panic, as I mentioned, I've sort of already skipped step one and jumped right into building a whole bunch of models. I've realized in the past week that's pretty inefficient because I've built a whole bunch of things that I definitely won't be taking. So I need to take a step back and today's video I'll be doing just that. Taking a look at which army and which units I'll be taking with me on the day to play in this tournament. A typical game of Warhammer has you and your opponent start on two different ends of the battlefield. An average game will have five objective markers. The idea is that if you get any of your units on these objective markers you claim that objective for your own. The whole game ends up being you pushing for objectives. The two at your starter deployment zone are usually the easiest to get. Then the center objective is pretty contested so there's a big fight around that. Towards the late game you can usually push to capture your opponent's objectives. What that means in reality is you need a variety of units from uh, just cheap throwaway units that you don't mind being killed off because they're cheap for holding objectives to some really really strong units that can push forwards, take objectives from enemies as well as play flexible roles of everything in between. So with that in mind let's go ahead and start building out our list of units we'll be taking to the tournament. Firstly, let's focus on the defensive units. These units will typically hang back. We don't want them to be heavy in points cost because we want them to be able to sit on objectives. Usually they won't be bothered for the first few turns. So to have something expensive doing nothing is a waste of points. First up, we have the Crute Carnivores. These guys are just 60 points for 10 units. They are incredible for sitting on home objectives. All crutes gain additional defensive benefits behind cover. Now, they aren't super strong, but there are a lot of them. So we'll take one unit of 10 
Krut carnivores. Next up we have the Krut hounds. These guys are basically attack dogs for the carnivores and they're only 24 points. They're fast moving and can be powerful to leave on an objective while the carnivores go out and do something else. So let's add one unit of four for just 24 points. Next up we have the strike team. The strike team is a really flexible unit where they are stronger than croup carnivores but they are not as good in close combat. That means that they're still ideal for sitting back on our home objectives but they're best placed on the secondary objective near the one in your home base. So not the one you start on basically but because they don't cost a lot and they have a decent ranged capability as well, we'll add one unit of 10, which is just 80 points. Next up, we have the Breacher team. These guys are similar to the Strike team, but pack a much stronger punch. It means that you can offload them, rely on them being in a decent range to engage with the enemy, and usually take them off an objective or attack them in a vulnerable spot. We're going to take two squads of these at 85 points each that will bring us to a total of 170 points for the two teams remember that tank that we talked about well for this army that's called a devil fish they don't have a lot of firepower but what they do have is a lot of toughness so you load a breacher team into one of these move them up to the position on the board where you want to unload the breacher team and that breacher team cannot be targeted while they're inside the tank with the devil fish Fish only costing 95 points each. We'll take two of these, so one for each Breacher team, bringing it to a total of 190 points. Let's move on to the more aggressive units. These units are the ones we'll be moving onto our opponent's side of the board and really looking to capitalize on taking their objectives. First up, we have the Crisis Battle Suits. These really are the main and currently strongest units in the Tau army. They're really Really tough to take down. They have an insane amount of firepower. They're also flexible enough that they can be moved to the home objectives if help is needed or even move to that center objective if things get a little bit hot. Loaded out, these are 315 points for a unit of four. What we're going to do is take two units of four here. That adds an additional 630 points onto the roster. Next up, we have a commander in M4 Forcer battle suit. In any game of Warhammer, you can have a couple of special units. They're basically the leaders of the army. They essentially give additional buffs or bonuses to the other units on the battlefield, as well as being quite capable themselves. This is one of my two special units. Essentially, it's like the crisis suits, but he's on his own and he can take an absolute beating while dishing out a ridiculous amount of firepower. He will likely follow around the crisis battle suits and provide support to them. He gives them quite a lot of bonuses, but can also support in what they're firing at to just clear things even faster. The commander and enforcer battle suit is 195 points, but well worth every point. So let's add him. From there, we move on to units that don't fit a particular role in the army. They're flexible units that can provide different support depending on how the battle plays out. The first one of those is the Ethereal. This is the special second character that we just talked about. He's like a mystical guy who provides huge bonuses to units around him. The downside is he's very squishy. We'll be flexing around the back line, avoiding enemies, but buffing other units where he can. At just 85 points, he's an incredible pick for the army, so we'll add him here. Next are the stealth battle suits. I love these guys. They're able to be deployed anywhere on the board, which means I can use them very reactively in play like sneaking them behind enemy lines when there's an opportunity. They do have good firepower, but they're pretty weak. I'm going to just bring in a single unit of three for just 75 points. They're worth it at that level because they can make some surprise plays and take objectives that maybe are difficult for any other units to grab. From there, we have the Pathfinder team. These guys aren't too dissimilar to the Strike Squad that we talked about a few units ago but this is unique 
in that their weapons are okay, but their real strength is marking enemy units as targets. When they mark an enemy unit, it makes that unit more susceptible to being hit. That means all of my other units on the battlefield have a much better chance of using their super strong weapons against the marked target. With a unit of 10 of these just being 100 points, we're going to add them to our army too. Finally, we have the broadside battle suits. These guys look so cool. Not only do they look amazing, but they pack a massive punch. They're one of my strongest units in the army. The downside is they aren't very mobile and can be hit and miss in their usage, depending on if they have line of sight, but they can pretty much see across the entire board. If they're shooting at something, the chances are it's not going to survive that turn. With them being 100 points each, we'll take a unit of three, along with some drones to shield them, and that will bring us to an additional 360 points. In total, for the entire army, that brings us to 1,969 points, which sounds about right. I'll probably make a couple of tweaks as we lead up to the big day, just to get us as close to that 2,000 as I can. But this is a really good foundation now. More importantly, it means I know what models I need to build over the next few days, so I can actually turn up to this tournament and Compete. The next steps for me from here are to build out the new units that we've added today. I'm honestly not sure I can do this in the time I have available. Every experienced Warhammer player I tell looks at me with a raised eyebrow with how much I've got left to do in just over a week's worth of time. But I need to try. I'll either make it and be able to play at the competition or won't. We'll find out together if I make it. Please hit the like button to show me some love for this insane challenge I'm on and subscribe to see how I do next week and if I make it in time for the tournament. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you in the next one.